What's up everyone? John Renton here from Techno Buffalo here at the full review for you of the newest 3D powerhouse. This is the Evo 3D for Sprint, the successor to the very first 4G smartphone, the Evo 4G. Let's see if it lives up to the outstanding precedent that its father set for. So if your ears are still bleeding from that intro, my apologies. So as I do with all of my phone reviews, I like to start out with talking about call quality. Doesn't matter what the phone can do or not do, if it doesn't make good phone calls, it's not going to be much use to you. Uh, when I do my phone tests, I'll drive uh, in about a five mile radius where I am in Southern California and do a 20 call test. Uh, I'm in a fringe 3G, 4G area. Primarily I was on the 3G side. Uh, and about 12 of my calls were done on only 3G, and I didn't have any drop calls at all. Call quality is absolutely outstanding, as I found to be pretty typical uh, with Sprint service. However, the other eight calls were sort of on 4G areas, sort of not. Sometimes it would drop in and out. Uh, and when they would drop in and out, the calls would also drop in and out. Uh, so I had three dropped calls, and the call quality was not outstanding when I was connected to Sprint's 4G WiMAX network. Now granted I was only connected with one bar of service and the drop calls primarily happened in the 3G to 4G handoff. But something to keep in mind if you are in a fringe area. Speakerphone, as has been true with most uh, HTC phones that have come out recently, and this is of course HTC built, as is you can tell, as is you can tell, huh, as you can tell by that big HTC logo right there, uh, speaker quality is absolutely outstanding. So if you're a big speakerphone user like me, you are going to be pretty happy. So as we go through the review, we'll talk about specs and I'll remind you everything that this guy packs. Of course, the biggest things and the things that I wanted to know, and I assume you want to know too, is how does the screen and the 3D camera work and how fast really is this? Because it's got one of Qualcomm's new 1.2 gigahertz dual core chips and this thing is absolutely a screamer. So when I did my review of the HTC Sensation, uh, which is a T-Mobile phone and the first phone that was actually running uh, HTC's new Sense 3.0, I, I gave a bit of an overview on Sense and what it could do because the first phone we've seen it in. Uh, this being the second, I'm not going to do as thorough an overview of Sense 3.0. You can check out that previous video if you want to watch it. Uh, but I will show you some of the highlights. So Sense is essentially a skin that sits on top of Android. Uh, Android, of course, is very customizable and this is HTC's uh, custom Sense and it is on top of Android Gingerbread. So you are getting at least the most recent phone OS. So here's a couple cool things to notice here about this. First, the lock screen. You can customize any of these four icons and you can jump right to it. So if I wanted to say jump into gallery, I could just drag it right down and I would jump into gallery. If I want to just unlock the phone, you can just unlock it pretty normally and you slide that up. You got a cool bunch of cool 3D animations here uh, that of course you can see. Uh, that lock screen that I just showed you can be pretty customizable. Uh, if you go ahead and go to lock screen, you can choose a ton of different HTC options. And you can set any of those four uh, programs to launch or shortcuts, whatever you choose, uh, very, very easily. Some other nice additions, if you go ahead and drag this on down, uh, you get quick settings, which I really like. Be able to turn these things on and off nice and easily. Go ahead and close that up. And of course, you get all kinds of neat 3D animations now because this phone is an absolute screamer from the spec department. Uh, it's being augmented too, I should mention, uh, with one gigabyte of RAM. Uh, running this guy through a quadrant test, I got a score of 1,733. Now, it doesn't really mean that much to me. Uh, when I use a phone, I just want it to be fast, and I like it to not kill battery, which we will talk about. Uh, this phone is an absolute screamer. Uh, is incredibly fast, whether I'm opening applications, uh, and my big test, sort of something that I use every day, is the web browser. I've got Flash content loaded here, it's enabled and turned on. Uh, and on some previous single core uh, phones with Flash turned on, if I did quick scrolling, I get that checkerboard pattern and the pinch to zoom wasn't as immediate as I would like. Not true here at the Evo 3D. This thing is fast, I have never had a checkerboard pattern show up. Um, incredibly quick, as you see here, pinch to zoom. Uh, very, very fast, really fluid. No issues at all, and Sprint's 3, uh, not 3D, I keep saying 3D, their 3G network has also been very, very fast. I've been getting speeds about 3 or so megabits per second down. You can see the flash content showing up there on the banner. Uh, applications load really quickly no matter what you're loading, 
um, just the phone you're going to have great performance from. You're not really going to have to worry much about memory management as well. Now, oftentimes some of the problems people have with their Android phones when they experience crashing uh, is due to their task killing programs, third party task killers. You're not going to need that with the Evo 3D. Certainly you have the option to manage your programs more judiciously if you'd like, uh, but not going to be necessary. You've got a gig of RAM in here, so things are always going to be fast and always going to be working pretty well. Uh, so the next thing, the big thing I wanted to see was, of course, the 3D-ness. Uh, and how does the 3D cameras work, or how do the 3D cameras work? Uh, so I mentioned earlier the HTC Sensation, uh, which really is a uh, very similar phone, you can see it right here, to the Evo 3D, although this does have an 8 megapixel sensor. That sensor does drop to 5 megapixels when you do the 3D business. Uh, when you shoot in 3D, uh, you can also shoot, or shoot, rather when you shoot in 2D, you can shoot in 1080p, you're not going to be able to do that, unfortunately, um, in 3D. So let me show you some of the stuff about the phone. Um, one of the gripes that I have is that giant camera button. Now I like a dedicated camera button, I'm all for a dedicated camera button. What I'm not for is a giant dedicated camera button that almost feels like it's going to slice your hand when you hold it. If you look at it, right at the right angle, you can see it's raised, and it's a bit of a sharp edge right there. So if you're a right-handed or you hold your phone in your right hand, as you pick it up and you slide your hand over it, uh, you skate can get caught, <laughs> and I've actually had that happen a few times. Something to bear in mind. So you've got a really big camera switch right there, and you've got your 2D to 3D shutter. We'll leave that on 3D for right now, and I really like that that shutter's there, or the button there rather, is to set it to 2D or 3D. It makes it very easy. So I'll go ahead and open up the camera application, and this is going to open up the 3D camera. Now unfortunately, you're not going to be able to see much in 3D. I'll bring in my camera remote here. This is just going to look weird and blurry to you. Uh, this is using stereoscopic 3D to capture the image. So I'll go ahead and sort of get in focus. I'll go ahead and take the picture. You can see there's a bit of a delay, and the picture is snapped. Stereoscopic 3D essentially means glasses-free 3D. Uh, and I will say that I was a bit skeptical that the 3D was going to be a gimmick on the phone. Uh, and those fears were kind of realized. I'm not that big into the 3D craze. The Nintendo 3DS, for example, hurt my eyes uh, after using it for just about 20 minutes. Uh, if you guys are big computer users, you stare at a monitor for 5-10 hours at a time, your eyes start to hurt. Uh, using something like the 3DS, which also uses stereoscopic 3D, uh, definitely hurt my eyes. I didn't have that same eye strain, though, however, uh, with something like the uh, Evo 3D here. So I should go back to my gallery and I'll show you some of the pictures. Uh, here's some sample 3D images. So we'll go to the one that we just shot, for example. Camera shots. And there is that 3D image. Uh, so, again, not going to look 3D to you. I will say the 3D effect, though, really does work well. So if you're into 3D, this is going to be a very nice welcome addition. However, if 3D is not that important to you, you're going to like that you can just go ahead and do this. Boom! 3D is turned off. And now you just have a very quick really nice 2D uh, camera where you can shoot 1080p video uh, and shoot very high quality stills. So is it a gimmick? Yeah. Is it a deal killer? Certainly not. Uh, if you'd like to have the option to have uh, 3D, then you have the option to do that here. Uh, and you're getting it in a very, very, very nice package. Um, so you're going to see 3D, of course, on the screen. Uh, let's talk about this QHD screen for a few minutes. Go ahead and we'll jump back into gallery because there's a lot of stuff to see here. Uh, I have not been the biggest fan, I've gone on record as saying, I don't think HTC is putting out the best screens possible. Uh, especially when you compare it to something like Samsung's AMOLED or Super AMOLED screens, or AMOLED Plus, or what other, other type of AMOLEDs you can possibly think of. Um, the screen just hasn't really popped for me. So here's some images, these are in 3D. Yeah, they look fine, the colors are sort of bright, but they're not as bright as they could be. You look at text, for example, text on a website, it's crisp and it's clear, but it's not as crisp and clear as it could be. Oftentimes, I use the example of TV shopping. So if you walk into your local big box retailer and you see two TVs next to each other, uh, you're going to notice a difference between the quality between one and two of them. Uh, however, once you get that TV home on your wall, you're not going to notice a difference in quality. So if you're holding phones next to each other, you're looking at this versus, say, the Galaxy S2, you can notice a difference in the screen quality. However, if this is your primary phone and this is what you got in your pocket, the screen's going to look fine. I just want to give sort of people a frame of reference. The screen is not the best thing about the phone. However, you are getting that stereoscopic 3D screen, so sort of you can measure out uh, the pros and the cons. So all that 3D-ness uh, certainly is going to come at a drain of battery as well as that 4.3 inch screen. Uh, HTC packs a pretty big 1730 milliamp hour battery 
into this admittedly chunky package. And I'm happy to say that I was able to get a full day of battery life, which is awesome. Granted, I didn't do much 3D watching, uh, but I did have two exchange accounts pulling data information all the time. Uh, about an hour and a half-ish of phone calls, pretty extensive web browsing, uh, and a lot of YouTube viewing, and I got through a full day. So hooray for HTC for doing uh, pretty nice battery management and processor management. Uh, something to sort of bear in mind. Um, so let's talk a little bit about the size of this guy, because this is not the thinnest phone on the planet. Uh, clocks in at six ounces, and you feel all those six ounces. I do like the back, sort of that rubber feel to it. Hopefully you can see the texture there. Uh, phone felt very good in the hand. Definitely feels high quality. I like that there's not a gap between the battery and the back of the phone here. Sometimes when there's a little bit of a gap, you can hear a bit of hollow noise. Uh, not so, HTC's build quality is absolutely outstanding. Um, that's certainly true here with the Evo 3D. The design is fine. I like the capacitive buttons here on the bottom that are sort of encapsulated in those circles, very Evo-like. Uh, I do like the 3D to 2D toggle here, and I like having the camera shutter button again, but I've already talked about how it slices your finger. So sort of bear in mind. I did test this phone for the death grip, as I'm now starting to do on all my phones. Uh, I did not have a death grip on here, so hooray. Your phone is not going to be draining uh, not only battery, but losing signal strength whenever you try and hold it. Um, design standpoint, otherwise, is pretty standard Android camera on the back. I do wish that it had the kickstand, sort of Evo-like, but alas, that was not to be here. I like the location of the power and lock button in the upper right-hand corner. 3.5 millimeter headset jack has a little bit of a hump right there. You can see it on the right angle, but nothing that's a deal breaker. Uh, overall, if you're in the market for an Android smartphone, if you're looking for a super phone with awesome specs, the Evo 3D is really the way to go. Uh, it is an absolutely outstanding device, and the 3D is just an added benefit. Uh, is, would it be the reason I'd say go out and buy the phone? Certainly not. But it's kind of cool to take a 3D picture and show your friends, like, hey, it looks like I'm coming right at you. Uh, it works. It works decently well. It's probably the best implementation of stereoscopic 3D that I've seen, uh, the Nintendo 3DS included in that. This is an all-around really solid package, and one I can definitely recommend if you're looking for the latest specs and the latest hardware on a phone that's really going to last you throughout your two-year contract. The Evo 3D is a wonderfully fantastic choice and definitely gets recommended. So guys, hope you enjoyed. I am John Rettinger from Techno Buffalo. This has been a full review of the HTC built Evo 3D for Sprint.